Hi, my name is Rajan Matthews and I'm coming to you from New Delhi, India. Joan, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say a few words uh, as you're gathered together to remember Jim. Uh, I think back over the 25 years plus that uh, I've gotten to know Jim and as a family we've enjoyed his presence along with you and the rest of the family. I can't imagine uh, that Jim has gone on. Uh, it's always a hard thing for anybody to eulogize anybody else, especially a close friend or a loved one or a member of the family and I never thought that uh, I'd have to do this. Uh, one always thinks that uh, friends are there forever but I suppose there comes a time when we do have to say goodbye. I know this will be difficult for you Joan and Anne-Marie and Steve and James uh, but I want to share with you uh, some thoughts and things that I remember about our dear Jim, uh, a passage of scripture and perhaps some things that uh, will be a comfort to you at this time. So first of all let me just read a passage of scripture from the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and following and then let me make a few comments. Therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is a passage of scripture that talks about those who compose this great cloud of witnesses who have kept the race or kept the faith and run the race and have now been part of that great cloud of witnesses that has referred to that best testimony to the great grace and love of God. And as we look at this passage of scripture we are reminded that they were able to complete the race because they kept their focus and their eyes on Jesus the author the pioneer of their faith and as I look back on the life of Jim I can't think of any more appropriate situation than to understand that he is now part of this great cloud of witnesses uh, that bears testimony to the faithfulness of the God that Jim served and the faithful commitment that he made to his God and kept in his lifetime looking unto Jesus the author and the pioneer of the faith that sustained him and carried him through and as I look back over these many years, there are some things that characterize in my mind uh, the life of Jim and what he did and how he lived his life. And the first thing that I recall about Jim is his deep and abiding faith that was so characteristic of all that he did. He had a strong sense of his belief in Almighty God and in our Lord Jesus and the way he conducted his life was a testimony to that foundational truth of the faith in a God who could take him and sustain him through. The second thing that uh, I'm reminded about about Jim was again his deep commitment to integrity and truthfulness. I never did run into anybody that was so compassionate but also so uh, forceful in terms of the understanding of truth and the faithfulness to follow that through and the integrity and lifestyle that characterized a person who understood clearly what the aspects of truth were in his life. And so that was something that Jim again modeled in his life that is part of the great witness that he now bears to us in our time and in this generation. The third thing that I always recall about Jim was the fact that he had a hard head and a soft heart when I was about 45 years, a friend of mine came and told me, Rajan, you're now at that age when a hard head and a soft heart exchange places. And uh, I recall that Jim never let that mistake happen in his life. He always knew when to keep a hard head and a soft heart. He was a PhD by training and he had a keen analytical mind, razor sharp and always to the point understanding what was peripheral and what was of the essence and he always was able to get at things that perhaps we missed 
and I always appreciated that uh, ability of Jim uh, to have that hard head. But it never let him get away without the compassionate part of him which exhibited his soft heart. He always had the soft corner for the person who was at the periphery, who uh, was disenfranchised, that needed that extra helping hand. And it was that combination that was so endearing uh, to us about Jim. I always recall our children uh, running over to uh, Uncle Jim and Auntie Joan when our parenting style got a little too much for them. They scampered off across the street to that house across and they found uh, always a welcoming smile and a warm heart and, uh, and a home that exemplified that compassion uh, that was exhibited by Jim and Joan. The third thing that I recall uh, in uh, knowing Jim over these years was the absolute commitment that he had to family. In a day and time when families are disintegrating and children are being abandoned and left to their own devices, Jim had a clear understanding of the vows that he made so very many years ago that when he stood before Almighty God and made a commitment that until death do us part is what constituted the basis of his vows. He kept that and that was a rich legacy and testimony to us. Several months ago I had the privilege of marrying Anne Marie and James and I couldn't help but look over the very many years, I don't know how many years, but I must have been over 75 to 80 years of combined marital faithfulness that was exhibited in that marriage hall. And I thought to myself, what a rich legacy to pass on to a daughter who is now beginning her life together. And that too was a part of his faithful witness. In a disintegrating world of families and children, Jim kept the faith in terms of his marriage commitments and his vows. And that too is an example of his commitment, that great testimony he bears, a cloud of witnesses of which he is a part and which he now passes on to us. And finally, I always remember the deep inquisitiveness that Jim had for the things of faith. Grounded in the scriptures, Jim committed himself to studying the scriptures. He was part of our Bible study. So many evenings he would come in, always early, deeply anxious to understand the things of faith as is founded in scripture. His faith was bounded and strengthened by his understanding of scripture. And he analyzed it in his own analytical way, asking the hard questions, but always allowing scripture to be the bedrock on which his faith and his life was sustained by. And so, as I come to this point where I look back on the life of Jim, I can remember this smiling face of a man who is now part of this great cloud of witnesses, who lived his life well and faithfully to the God he loved, committed himself to the family that he cherished and nourished. And so I can only say in conclusion with St. Paul as he wrote to the Thessalonians, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. We have a hope that is foundational to us. Jim knew that hope. And because of that faithful commitment to that hope and to that faith, he now beholds the face of the Savior that he worshipped. And he has heard the voice of his master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter now into the rest of your Savior and your God. So Jim, friend, uh, I have to say goodbye. Uh, we rest on that firm foundation, that promise of our God, that we shall meet just as you've seen the face of the Savior. I am assured and I'm totally convinced that we will one day see each other face to face again. Until such time, be well, dear friend. And on behalf of my family, on behalf of our children, stay well, Uncle Jim. God bless. Bye.